Haley. It's Russell Dave Brown right along ringside. We're ready. By golly, we got a dandy of a program lined up for you today, and I think some of the match is going to be most interesting, oh, Davey. Oh, I think you are right. We have the Invader coming in here to take on the Dutchman, Dutch Mantel from Oil Trough, Texas. That's the opening match today. Then Roy Rogers will be teamed with young Rick McCord. They will be going against the Midnight Express. Dennis Condry, Randy Rose, and Norvell Austin. They'll be here in the second match in tag team action. Then it's going to be uh, Speed with Jimmy Hart going against Dennis Upton in a single match. Rick Morton teams with Chief Thundercloud against the team of the Assassins. And then a six-man tag team match, our expiration of time match today. Beautiful Bobby Eaton, Stan Lane, and Sweet Brown Sugar on one side of the ring. On the other, it will be Bill Superstar Dundee and the Gibson Brothers, Rick and Robert. Ooh-wee, boy, what an expiration of time, as that's going to be for a fact. As a matter of fact, we've got some other ones, and Dave, I've also got an excellent film on a wild and woolly battle royal that I think everybody's going to enjoy. To get it all in, we better get going. We'll be back in just one moment. Dutch Mantel in the ring right now. His opponent, the Invader, stepping up to ringside, and we are about ready to go with a one-fall 15-minute time limit match. The Invader, 200 pounds, is listed wrestling weight. Dutch, 224 pounds from Oil Trough, Texas. The current holder of that AWA Southern Championship belt, Dutch Mantel. This match, one-fall 15-minute time limit, and the referee is Jerry Calhoun. Bell time, and here we go, Davey. The Invader wrestling under the mask against the Dutchman. This is a non-title match, by the way. Over on the ropes. Referee there calling for a clean break and got one. Dutch Mantel back up the center. Leg dive. Puts the Invader down to the mat. Invader able to pull the right shoulder up. Dutch holding him down. Referee started the count. We saw Dutch on that leg dive the way he put that shoulder in the waist and drove him back, too. He was mm -hmm. pulling and driving at the same time. Beautiful. Dutch Mantel. Whoops, the invader over under the rope. Referee Jerry Calhoun there wants a break. He's got it. Invader back up on his feet. Invader side headlock. Dutchman picks him up, knee drops him. Man, man. Nice move by Dutch Mantel. Dutch backed into the corner. Referee is there, calling for the break. Vader finally breaks it with a little help from Dutch Mantel. Dutch able to shove him back away from the corner. Minute and a half gone. Dutch back on the ropes. Referee right there. Dutch walks away from the rope. Out of the mat, the invader. Referee, did he start to count? Doesn't matter. He didn't get to three anyway. Invader has the right shoulder up off the mat. Dutchman still got the head locked. Long later, jumps him into the ropes. Dutchman. Using the arm, put him down as he came off those ropes, and now the invader finds himself in a headlock, lying on a mat again. Two minutes gone, two, and a one-fall, 15-minute time limit match. Ooh, boy, the invader is going to learn one of these days. You shove Dutch into those ropes, and that's twice he's caught him with a vicious shoulder butt coming off of there. Face lock. Dutch Mantell, pretty well in control of this match all the way so far. So many moves that are so solid, Dave, that uh, it's the reason he's got that belt, because he can really go, and he will flat make you hurt on every one of them. The invader, after hooking the bottom rope, got a break. Backs Dutch into the corner again. Invader using those corners. Knee to the midsection. Whip drops away. Dutch hits the turnbuckles hard, and the invader follows. Vader grabbing Dutch in the headlock. Now backs him into the ropes. Whip into the ropes. Ooh, upper arm. The Invader successful with one of those moves. There's a cover. One, two. Dutch Mantel breaks it. A 
again to the rope. This time, oh. Dutch Mantell caught him with a knee. And the invader tried it one time too many. Dutch backs him to the rope, whips him across the ring. Down he goes. Dutch covers one, two, and three. Three minutes, 28 seconds the time on it. And the win in the match, Dutch Mantell. All right, I'll tell you what, uh, when the invader started going after him, he started off by going at the eyes and then bang, whipped him in the corners and so forth like that. Old Dutch shifted it into high and uh, it was not too long before it was all over. We got more action coming up. We're going to be back to it in just a moment. Okay, back to Channel 3's championship wrestling action here in just a moment. Hey, Tuesday night, back in the Louisville Gardens, you bet. Regular Tuesday night action only is not so regular, my friend. Big night of it, you better believe, with a triple main event and no increase in price. Southern heavyweight title match, Rick and Robert Gibson against the Midnight Express. And then the third main event is going to be Bill Dundee and Steve Kern against the Cuban and the Iranian Assassins for the Southern Tag Team titles. Now... I want to bring the Express over here, Dennis Condry, Randy Rose, and Norvell Austin, Rick and Robert Gibson. I think that uh, when this program was taped, they showed that they're not afraid of the Express, at least. Let me tell you something, Lance Russell. If you give me a board or two before in my hand, brother, I'll fight a giant. I'll fight anybody, because with a board, son, you can beat somebody's brains out. Do you know that, Lance yeah, Russell? Do. Now, let me say this. I admit we did take the Gibsons a little bit too lightly on a couple of occasions. But let me say this, boys. You've got $3,000 that belongs to us. You have made it. You have got it. You have taken it away from us. But we will get it back at your expense. Well, we'll have the opportunity to see it coming up Tuesday night in the Louisville Gardens. And in addition to that, a big night of championship action for the first family. You know, a lot of people probably wonder how in the world can Jimmy Hart week after week come up with title shots? Well, simply because I am the smartest man in professional wrestling. But even being the smartest man in professional wrestling, I do realize that time is running out. Angel, Ali, this could be your last chance, baby. The belts are on the line. It's up to you. Come on, Stan. You know something, Lance Russell? I'm going to come out here and make physical threats against Dutch Mantel. But Dutch, I want you to be aware of this one fact, brother that you're going against pound for pound one of the greatest wrestlers in the sport today, brother, and I plan on leaving that ring with your strap. You'll see it, Southern Heavyweight title match, the Gibsons against the Express, and the Cuban and the Iranian Assassin challenging Dundee and Kern Tuesday night at the Garden. Let's take a look at some of the action. 23-man, two-ring battle royal is the way it started, and here it is. Martin Gibson Condry and Rose as Martin as Paul Martin walking Norval Austin back to the dressing room. Rick Gibson trying to get in there goes Rick Martin. Dennis Condry, beautiful drop kick. The referee is down. Gibson comes in, covers up Randy Rose, but referee Jerry Calhoun is down. Condry, who was eliminated, drops back in. Somebody holler for Paul Morton. Rose now on top of Rick Gibson. Count of one, two, three. And the winner in 12 minutes, 10 seconds is declared to be Randy Rose. Randy Rose. Dennis Condry picks up Rick Gibson, slams him into the turnbuckle. Randy Rose ties it around. Referee Jerry Calhoun was hurt very bad on that drop kick. He is still down. Paul Morton had counted out. Rick Gibson, after Condry had gotten back in after the elimination, there now Norvell Austin is tying Gibson to the ring turnbuckle. The Midnight Express working on Rick Gibson. And they certainly deserve a fine because the referees have been abused. 
The official winner was declared to be Randy Rose. But a lot of objections from the crowd. And I think you saw it. Rick Gibson hung in the corner. The Midnight Express hammering away on Rick Gibson. Well, again, Paul Morton was pushed out of it. Jerry Calhoun back up, but he's still stunned. Again, a violation after violation. Plus, they are just pounding the stew out of Rick Gibson. Robert Gibson coming back out to help his brother. Rick is tied into the rope. Robert up in the ring finally, and he's scrambling with the Midnight Express. There it goes. He's trying to help Rick Gibson. Robert has been busted open. And the Express, all three of them, going after the Gibson brothers. Here comes Tim Leonard. Both of the Gibsons bleeding. Here comes Tom Maley. Knocked down by Randy Rose. Rick hanging upside down in the corner where they tied him. Rick McCord coming out. for Dutch Mantel. So far, the Midnight Express have been king of the hills inside the ring. Here comes Rick Morton, Roy Rogers, and the Express hops out of the ring and takes off. Well, the Midnight Express most unhappy, even though Randy Rose declared the winner, they've been fined a thousand dollars apiece, and that's the way that one ended up. They are up there in the ring right Substantial now. Substantial fines levied against them, and while they're doing all the complaining and moaning and groaning about it, they had it coming from the way that tape, you could see it right there. Now, in the ring, we're going to see him live. Let's go, Dave, with the official introduction. Introducing at a total weight of 435 pounds from Nashville, Tennessee, Roy Rogers and his partner from Salem, Virginia, Rick McCord. Going against them at a wrestling weight of 477 pounds, the Midnight Express. The Midnight Express, Dennis Condry, Randy Rose, and Norvell Austin. This match one fall, 15-minute time limit. Referee Jerry Calhoun. Looks like it's going to be, uh, well, it's hard to tell, but it looks like maybe Rose and Condry. And referee Jerry Calhoun telling them to shed one of the members of the Express out of there. They're having a little conversation about it. Rick McCord, fine young wrestler, as is Roy Rogers, but they've got plenty of work cut out for him right here. 
bell time. And here we go. Roy Rogers starting out against Randy Rhodes. And there is Norvell Austin is the one to go to the chair with the whistle. Dennis Condry and Randy Rose going against Roy Rogers and Rick McCord. The referee uh, over to be certain that they, one of them stays outside of the ropes while the other one's in. Roy into a standing side headlock. Good shoulder from Roy, and he hooks that side, goes to a mare. Gets Randy Rose down on the canvas. Roy, as we have mentioned many times before, good height, great frame, and he'll fill out as he gets a little older. He really put it on Rose that time. This time a leapfrog back to him, and again, hooks ahead. A mare and down on the deck. Norville Austin making some kind of conversation with referee Jerry Calhoun. Uh, Condry had his knee over the second rope. And the referee said, let's pull it back out of there till it's time to come in. Randy Rose zinging up. Stiff forearm against Roy Rogers. One fall, 15-minute time limit about. Rogers catches Randy Rose. Rick McCord now in for the first appearance. Randy Rose still in. He hadn't gotten back to the corner to tag Dennis Condry as yet. A lot of bad conversation about the uh, battle royal, the portion of it that we showed, the way they mishandled not only the referees, which they got the fine for, but what they did to the Gibson boys. Oh, Randy Rose trying to cram a shoulder right through Rick McCord. Hits the turnbuckle, and McCord has him back down. Jerked out of it. The referee calls for a break as he grabbed the hair to get him into that head scissors. Rose back over uh, having a conversation with Dennis Condry in the corner, but he's back out. Going to stay in there with Rick McCord. Two and a half minutes gone in the match. Thirteen and a half to go as Norvell Austin tooting that whistle at uh, the Express uses in the corner. McCord lifted up in the air. Rose locks him down. There's a tag on Big Dennis Condry. Randy Rose over holding him to keep him from going to the corner of Roy Rogers. And now Condry takes over with the Salem, Virginia youngster. In the air! Body slam. Condry drops to that knee across the chest. Four down again. Norvell took it upon himself to try to quiet down the crowd. He had no luck. Randy Rose puts him down. Rattled in the corner, Dennis. Suplex. He really banged him down hard. Oh. Roughing him up. Ball for a knee, and he slams McCord's head into the knee. And Randy Rose makes the tag, and Rose takes over. Body slam. Drops down hard with that knee, and now here's the part of it with the express. When they get somebody hurt, instead of going for the pin, all they're doing is uh, trying to punish a young fella in the air. Norvell is tracking the referee. Rose comes off, bangs down on top of Rick McCord. And right then and there, they could have gone for the pin, but they didn't. Once again, Condry up on the shoulder. And here comes the Gibson. Forward. Roy helped Rick out of there, and Robert Gibson and Rick Gibson with boards in their hands, 
have busted the hands of Randy Rose and Dennis Condry. who is bleeding profusely. And the Gibsons, and I don't blame them one bit, it's not certainly anything that we use as an example. This qualification on Rogers and McCord had to be. That's what it was. Midnight Express, uh, they're going to get the victory, but not much satisfaction after the Gibsons hit that ring there. I will tell you, as I say, that's not something you're going to uh, use as an all-time example of sportsmanship, but the Gibsons, after getting banged around by the Midnight Express previously, I can't say that I really blame them, Davey. No, indeed. I tell you, one of those uh, where the action as it ends on disqualification when the Gibson brothers hit the ring, time when the disqualification occurred, 4 minutes, 38 seconds, and the official winners of the match, the Midnight Express. The ring awaits as Dennis Upton and referee Jerry Calhoun step up into the ring. Here comes Speed, the opponent, Jimmy Hart. Jimmy's got his own chair now. It's uh, bright red, and on the back it says Jimmy Hart. I'm not sure what else it says. But uh, anyway, it's now at ringside, and we are about ready to go. One fall, 15-minute time limit match from Tupelo, Mississippi at 212 pounds, Dennis Upton. And going against him from the first family, with manager Jimmy Hart at a wrestling weight of 210 pounds speed. This match one fall, 15 minute time limit. Referee Jerry Calhoun. Speed. Dennis Upton. As the bell sounds, action underway. Upton, tall guy. He's got a height advantage of about 9, 10 inches on speed. Speed backs him to the ropes. Takes a swing at him, and Upton had left the area by the time the fist got there. Then it's backed onto the ropes again. Speed took a swing at him. Speed with a cover. Dennis Upton kicks out of it at a one count. Upton, we've seen several times before. He has not been wrestling all that long, though. And boy, I tell you, once he gains some more experience, he may be somebody to reckon with with a height he has. He can reach halfway across the ring. Nice takedown by Dennis. He bars the left arm, speed on the mat. A little over a minute gone. Dennis Upton rolling with him. Maintain the hold. Speed able to hook the bottom rope, though. Wrap his feet around it. Referee right there called for the break. Speed, as he gets back to his feet, complained to referee Jerry Calhoun that he had his mask pulled. Upton, top wrist block. Gets Speed's feet up from under him. Bars the left arm again. Speed up on his feet. Picks up Upton. Body slam. Upton hangs on to him, though. But twice already in the match that uh, Speed has tried to maneuver. And Upton has been able to hang on to the hole. Two minutes gone. Two minutes into the action. Off the rope. Into the leg of Speed. Dennis Upton hits the match. Again, Dennis Upton with a backdrop. He's rolled down to the mat by speed. Referee calling for a break. Not sure why exactly. I think maybe they were back in the ropes. He wanted him to break at that point. Speed. Whipped Upton into the corner over here. Now picks him up. Dennis body slammed. Trying to battle him back. Dennis Upton fighting his way to his feet. Turns speed, whips him across the ring. Back drops him. Speed hit the mat, bounces. He's up on his feet, but he's saying, wait a minute. 
Upton came in a little quick. Speed caught him with a foot. A cover by Speed. One, two, and three. He got him. He got him with uh, somewhat of a clothesline off the rope. And Speed ends up uh, getting the victory there as a result. Dennis Upton leaving the ring. Put up a good fight, but did not get the victory in the end. Jimmy Hart and Speed leaving the area. The victory goes to Speed. The time on it, three minutes, eight seconds. 3.08 the time. We'll be back with more wrestling action for you in a moment. Back to Wave Country's Championship Wrestling here in just one moment. Let me tell you about the action coming up in the territory. Friday, January the 22nd, Winslow, Indiana. Big 13-man battle royal will be the main event. Saturday the 23rd, Campbellsville, Kentucky. AWA Southern Tag Team Championship match. Dundee and Kern will, uh, will uh, rather defend their title against Eaton and Brown Sugar. And Thursday the 28th, Ratcliffe, Kentucky. North Harding High School, also a big battle royal going on there. More about that one later on. Now... Tuesday night, and we are back on Tuesday. Morton and Thundercloud against Nightmare and Speed. Bobby Eaton against Rick McCord. Sweet Brown Shearer against Tojo Yamamoto. Triple main event, no increase in price. Mantell defends against Stan Lane. Hart and Stan's corner, and it's going to be Bill Dundee and Dutch's corner. Then the Midnight Express go against Rick and Robert Gibson in a grudge match. And finally, an AWA Southern Tag Team Championship match. Cuban and Iranian Assassins challenge Bill Dundee and Steve Kern. Be there. Rick Morton already in the ring before we get the Cuban and the Iranian assassins out here. I want to get the king, Gary Lawler, who uh, we've asked him to come on out here, bring us an update report on how he's doing. Jerry. All right. You're looking great. My golly, got a gorgeous new sport coat on there. We got new, Lance. Huh? Come on, give me a break. Oh, okay, yeah. All different kind of looks like a Puerto Rican prom dress, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> you want to sit down with us, and uh, and Davey will take on the official introductions. Okay, Dave. All right, this is going to be a one-fall, 15-minute time limit match, introducing a total weight of 407 pounds from San Carlos, Arizona, Chief Thundercloud, and from Nashville, Tennessee, Rick Morton. The opponents are not here yet. But as soon as they arrive, we'll tell you who they are. It is a one fall. Oh, here they come. The Assassins with Jimmy Hart. He's just sitting out here, Jimmy, just, just to do the... All right, they've arrived. Now, their total weight, 456 pounds, with their manager, Jimmy Hart. The Assassins, the Cuban Assassin, and the Iranian Assassin. One fall, 15-minute time limit match, and the referee is Jerry Calhoun. Okay, we're about ready to go as the uh, Cuban and the Iranian Assassins, our guest commentator, Jerry Lawler. Who, how long is he going to be, Jerry, before you're back in action again? Like, everybody, everybody keeps asking me that. Looks like maybe one more week, Lance. All I'm right. ready to go right now. You put me in there, <laughs> I'll send the whole first family to the emergency room. Well, the doctors uh, have told the king he better slide out for one more week and then he'd be ready to go as the Iranian assassin Ali Hassan starting out against Rick Morton. Rick with veteran Chief Thundercloud as his partner and the Iranian assassin, of course, with the Cuban assassin as his partner. That Rick is one of, he's got to be one of the fastest wrestlers around. That's one of the best drop people I've ever seen. Chief Thundercloud takes over, snaps him down, gets a one count. That's about all he can go. Jimmy Hart pacing up and down the side over here. I don't think he wants to sit down too close to over where the king is. Sitting. I just hope he turns his back on me one time. <laughs> What is he dressed for? Halloween party? Don't he know? He's got his holidays mixed up. It's New Year's. Rick Morton in with a bar on Ali Hassan's arm. Well, that was a good move. Assassin went to uh, hip toss Rick. He reversed it and got him a hip toss. 
looking hard. That's his favorite tactic, Lance. I always complain. Anytime his man is at a disadvantage, he's complaining to that referee, trying to get the attention off of him. I think one of the strongest things to give the Devilies do that Hart does is distract the wrestler in the ring. Well, he will get you so mad with his horsing around and sticking you with that walking stick and whatever that he distracts that wrestler. Makes it very difficult to concentrate on uh, the side. Well, look at that right there. He's distracting the referee. He gets the referee's back turned, gives, the, gives the, the other wrestler an opportunity to go in and break the good hole that the chief had there. Or if you get, you know, if you've done something just like maybe an arm drag or a hip toss on one of his men, then Hart immediately complains to the referee. The next thing, the referee's asking you, hey, did you pull the hair? Did you pull the tights? It's breaking your concentration on the hold you've got. It's like you said, distraction is what Hart's good at. Cuban assassin over banging a forearm into uh, Chief Thundercloud. Misses the elbow. Double Tommy Hawk. He chopped him up good that time. Tojo Yamamoto, I think the Chief throws about the hardest chops I've seen in wrestling. Yeah. Comes at him with a foot to the midsection, side headlock, tag on Rick Morton. Hit that arm, there you go. And, it, oh, pardon me, go ahead. I was going to say, this is the guy you got to watch out for. I understand that Hart has taught him how to throw the fire. Is that right? No. Did we see that somewhere down the yes, line? Yes, sir. Ask Steve Kern about that. Well, where do you think Hart learned that little trick? <laughs> I know. There you go. Morton staying right in there with it. Nice. Well, that arm drag popped him over and down. See, there's just what we're talking about right there. As soon as Rick got the man down, Hart's hollering. He pulled his hair. The referee comes right over. talking to Rick. Did you pull the hair? It's a distraction, just like you said, man. It would be nice without him around ringside. Oh. Well, I'll let each individual answer that one for themselves. Yeah. Armbar, Rick hanging on to the Iranian assassin, Ali Hassan. Hart doing a little whispering to the Cuban assassin. I can tell you that, that will bring no good out of it. Oh, there's a good point. Oh. He got a Rick had him. Yeah. Rick spun, went into that drop kick immediately. Hassan got out of the way. Look at Hart. He's as happy as he can be now. Rick Morton took a shot to the midsection and another from the Cuban assassin. Those boots that Iranian assassin. Lance, you didn't pose for those boots, model your nose for those boots, did Look at those things. Big wow. hooks on there. He didn't wear those things just for decoration either. He uses them. He'll slam the head into them. Now there's that double right kick. I've never seen anybody who uses that the way he does. He hooks those little points right in with both feet. Five minutes uh, oh, Rick needs the tag right now. One third of the time when it is up. There's the tag. Come on, Chief. This be a good time for a little war dance right now, wouldn't it? Oh, he has one. That ball with the Cuban assassin coming in. Rick Morton. Oh, a surprise for him, too. Chief once again rolls it down. A lot of confusion. We've had uh, the Cuban assassin twice interfere with a pin on Chief Thundercloud. Same situation there. Hart and the other assassin distracting the referee. And the Chief probably had the, Cuban, or had the Iranian down for a count of four. Yes, sir. Ooh. Tough knee in the back. This is 
where the chief needs to tag out too. See, the good thing, there's one thing you got to say about these two guys. They keep, they try to keep the fresh man in the ring at all times. When you're wrestling in a tag team, that's about the most important thing you need to remember. Keep that fresh man in the ring. Hubbard one, two. That was close. Coming up on the seven minute mark, uh, so we're nearing the halfway point in this 15 minute time limit, Bob. Rick's head slammed down on the boot. Uh-oh, here it is again. And a third time. Hit him right across the eye that time, too. Oh. There's a cover on Rick Morton. Chief Thunderfowl taking a page out of the Cuban assassin's book. Came in and broke it up. Rick caught by the Cuban assassin. <laughs> well, you know, you gotta feel sorry for Calhoun. There's no way that one referee can handle him. Like Absolutely. He's said it a thousand times and I'm glad to hear you say it. going their way if they can just keep it now. Up double team on the Chief. That's going to be it. One, two, three. And at about the eight minute and 14 second mark, somewhere in there, the winners are going to be the Cuban and the Iranian assassin. As they come out victorious over Rick Morton and Chief Thunderfowl. They did it with a dandy little double team. And uh, that adds up to a victory for the first family in their effort against Morton and Chief Thunderfowl. Jerry, we're going to take a moment out right now. Appreciate you coming by. May see you a little while here. Right, Lance, stick around. Good. And by golly, we'll be back in just one moment. Well, we've been waiting for it, the six-man tag team match, and coming in here, actually seven of them, one is not supposed to be in the ring at any time, that's Jimmy Hart, he's in with his first family members, and oh, look out, Bobby Eaton. This match is going to be to the expiration of time. Team with the most falls to their credit when the time expires will be the winners of the match. Introducing at a total of 666 pounds from Huntsville, Alabama, Bobby Eaton, from Delray Beach, Florida, Stan Lane, and from Union City, Tennessee, Sweet Brown Sugar, their manager, Jimmy Hart. Going against them, total of 668 pounds from Pensacola, Florida, the Gibson brothers, Rick and Robert. And from Australia, the superstar, Bill Dundee. This match, to the expiration of time, Jerry Calhoun, the referee. Already, we'll see who's starting out here in just a moment. Uh, Rick and Robert Gibson and Dundee coming out of his jumpsuit. Stan Lane coming out of his robe. Bobby Eaton out of his jacket. And as yet, we still haven't had a determination. Yeah, the Gibson brothers have stepped out. So Billy will be starting. Bell time, and here we go. Dundee and Sweet Brown Sugar starting now, Dave. Back on the rope. Bill Dundee fired across the ring. Puts Sweet Brown Sugar down. Steps over. Good drop kick by Dundee. And Sweet Brown Sugar hits the mat. Back on his feet quickly. Back to a corner. Dundee takes him down. And again. Halfway across the ring, he was firing him. Tag made, and here is Rick Gibson. Sweet Brown Sugar back to the corner, makes the tag on Stan Lane. Stan out of Florida, Delray Beach, Florida. Oh, 
over to the corner. Rick makes the tag on Robert Gibson. Robert takes over on Stan Lane. Well, Jimmy Hart under the ring here. Bill Dundee went under the ring and was grabbing Jimmy Hart. Brown Sugar there to help him out. This Bill's way of saying, get over in that chair and sit down. Hart still isn't seated, standing here by the ring apron. Meanwhile, in the ring, oh, beautiful Bobby Eaton. He was nailed by Dundee from outside. Bobby over to the corner, the tag on Sweet Brown Sugar. Robert Gibson, what a move he put on him. Bobby Eaton was there to break it up before he could get a three count on him. But Robert rolled him out of that corner. Shoulders were down. And Bobby Eaton prevented the count. Robert over to the corner. The tag on Bill Dundee. Brown sugar into the ropes. Dundee with the upper arm waiting for it. Dundee. Coco wears sweet brown sugar. Monkey flip by Dundee. Coco heads to the corner to make a tag, but he was in the wrong corner, so they tag him instead. Now the tag's been made, and here is beautiful Bobby Eaton. Eaton against Dundee. Three minutes, five seconds gone in this expiration of time match. The first fall of action. Dundee they really beating on each other. Dundee backed into the corner. Oh, he can go to nail him, but he nails Stan Lane instead. Lane got a fist right in the teeth. Eaton still apologizing to Stan Lane. Then he goes after Sweet Brown Sugar while Eaton's preoccupied. Now they make up over here in the corner. Here comes Stan Lane in. Four minutes, four minutes gone. A little double team, Rick Gibson running Bobby Eaton out of there. Well, Eaton's still there. Referee finally gets him outside. It's Stan Lane and Bill Dundee. They got the assassin, the Cuban and Iranian, in the ring. Now we got eight men in there. Here's Steve Kern. Nine of them in there. First family bails out. They head back for the dressing room. It's going to be... A disqualification on them. We'll check the time. Back with the second fall if there is time in a moment. More action still to go right here. We've already had plenty of it on Channel 3's Championship Wrestling Tuesday night. Goodness gracious, a triple main event down there and no increase in price. A Glad you weren't. I don't know. We could have used you. <laughs> in a moment when those guys jumped in, I had the whole first family in there. You know, uh, uh, Jerry, I did ask you to stay over just a second because I wanted first to show everybody you're staying up and looking healthy and going to be back in there in about a week, right? Yeah, I feel real good, Lance. Uh, I'm just, like you say, waiting on the doctors okay. Uh, I feel 100%. I feel as good, you know. I, of course, there never was really a lot of, a lot of pain with the thing. And so uh, 
I'm just uh, waiting to see that the doctor says everything's okay, but I think I talked to him on the phone yesterday, and he said probably next week be ready to go. All right. Listen, something I wanted to ask you about. Right? Now, here you had the first family, and we had the match going, a six-man match. Cuban and the Iranian assassins jumping. You got the whole family. A lot of people ask me about this. You know, why the promoters let let something like that go on? What is this thing? I mean, these guys just go wild. Well, yeah, I understand what you get. The people are saying, you know, can't somebody, can't you or the promotion or somebody do something about this? Well, you got to understand that the promotion probably is doing about everything they can to uh, to curb this. I mean, they find the guys, they threaten with suspensions, but you got to understand uh, two things about wrestling. First of all. Uh, you know, this is not a sissy sport or anything, Lance. This no is way. a rough sport. You're going to expect this kind of stuff when you get in this business. If you can't stand the heat, stay out of the kitchen. Mm. So the wrestlers themselves, they expect this kind of thing. Second of all, you've got to understand that uh, this is also, it's a sport and it's also a business. It's the way I make my living. It's the way I, everybody in this makes their the money. And, and uh, you know, they say that the money is the really the, not only the root of all evil, it's about the root of everything. And the way to make a lot of money in the wrestling business is uh, to be the featured wrestler. And a lot of these guys come out here just trying to do that. They try to get themselves, uh, uh, you know, as notorious and, and try to make as much confusion and just, to, you know, just to be on yeah. doing something all the time, trying mm -hmm. to create some sort of controversy. And, and I think that's, that's what Hart is trying to do. You know, he's trying to be the biggest thing that's ever hit this area. And in his mind, the way to do that is to interfere in every match is to make the people as mad at him as he possibly can and to make the other wrestlers as mad at him as he possibly can. And he's doing a dead gum good job of it because you, he's got, you know, everybody Everybody wants to get Hart. So. You and Billy have mentioned this, the fact that Hart feeds these guys uh, this snow job, so to speak, about how to great and how to be this and that. And, and I got to believe that, boy, he is doing some of that mind control stuff sure. because these I mean, guys are just insane. Well, Hart surrounds himself with this whole, you know, a whole group of guys. He calls them family. But if you if you pay attention to the situation, Hart is always and tries to remain the center of attention. You know, he may come out here and tell everybody, yeah, I've got the world's greatest athlete, mm -hmm. but he wants to be the star. Mm -hmm. He wants to be the big shot. Yeah. Thank you. Alrighty, more action still to go right here. We've already had plenty of it on Channel 3's Championship Wrestling Tuesday night. Goodness gracious, a triple main event down there and no increase in price. AWA Southern tagged our heavyweight championship match, the Gibsons against the Midnight Express, and an AWA Southern tag championship match coming up. First, I want to call Rick and Robert in here. The folks have already seen it now, and when we taped it, by golly, you guys came in there a little hot and had boards in your hand against the Midnight Express. You're going to be meeting them Tuesday night. That's right, Tuesday night, Lance. First of all, I'd like to say it might not have been the right way to do it, but it seems like it's the only way to do it from now on. We're sick and tired of going out being Mr. Nice Guy. Seems like nice guys always finish last. So we're going out for one thing, and that's to beat you. Y'all come down here saying we're stepping stones. You're going to walk over us and get to the belts. Well, we want the belts just as much as you, probably more, because we had them for just a short time. I know Bill has them and Steve has them. They're nice guys, but we want the belts too. Midnight Express, you bring on down to Louisville Gardens, brother. We're ready. Rick and Robert Gibson, Billy, you and Steve are going to have it on the line. The belts will be against the assassins. That's right. Jimmy Hart really thinks he's done something. He really thinks he's got us back to the wall. He forced us into a title shot. Well, let me tell you something, Snake. You forgot to read the contract. It doesn't say no stipulations on that match. So all we got to do, brother, is just jerk you up into the ring. The match is over and the fight starts. Because we ain't forgot what happened last week, Daddy. I've been busted open a few times before. But when it's a snake like you, it does it with that walking stick, brother. I'm going to take it this week and shove it where the sun don't shine. Thank you. I believe, Steve, that uh, you could use a little more of that fighting with the assassins and Hari, too. Well, I'm not only interested in our match. I'm interested in the match with the Gibsons because I'm going to be watching them. Those two teams are trying to get a position to have a title shot. And they're two good teams. They're going to be fighting their hearts out. And I'll say this. Billy's fired up and I'm fired up. Well, we might not be able to throw fire like Jimmy Hart and his team, but I'll tell you what, we can throw these and we can throw them just as fast and as hard as you want to throw them and as hard as you want to get in there, we'll just deliver it right back to you. We're the champions, we're coming with the belts, and we're going to be leaving with the belts. You be looking for it in there. Title. Opening match today was Dutch Mantel defeating the Invader. Midnight Express, Dennis Condry, Randy Rose, Norvell Austin on the outside as they defeated Roy Rogers and Rick McCord by disqualification when the Gibsons came in and uh, had something to say to the Midnight Express with a couple of boards. It was Speed defeating Dennis Upton in about three minutes. The Assassins over Rick Morton and Chief Thundercloud in a tag team match. And then in the uh, six-man tag action, the expiration of time match, time did expire after that first fall. 
But Bill Dundee, Rick, and Robert Gibson were the winners of it as they won by disqualification uh, on Bobby Eaton, Stan Lane, and Sweet Brown Sugar when the assassins, the Cuban and Iranian, uh, hit the ring uh, at 4 minutes 22 seconds. Referee at that point disqualified the first family, so the win in the six-man expiration of time match goes to superstar Bill Dundee and the Gibson brothers, Rick and Robert. You know, uh, Dave, I know the folks like to see the rough and tumble stuff and all, but sometimes we read when the circumstances like today we just felt like that boy it was ready to blow loose and get out of hand and uh, all of that and it was just a good thing not to have another fall right, right. at that particular point so we uh, did have an opportunity to bring you a lot of action for dave brown lance russell saying bye bye the announcers on this program are selected and paid by parties other than